worthy by design. It is indeed a beautiful day to be alive. Welcome to Worthy by Design, a program that discusses the issues that border on the worth of a woman. Brought to you by Advent Cable Network Nigeria, ACNN TV. And I am Iberi Chims. Now, the subject of feminism when raised in social and um, religious circles, has been known to spark a lot and lot of controversy amongst those for and for those against. Reasons both camps strongly defend with proof. In recent times, social media has served as a channel for feminists to vent their displeasure and assert their stand. Now, what is feminism all about? What impact has it had on women? And most importantly, what is God's standpoint? To discuss this all-important issue, and also very controversial, are two very, very wonderful guests in the studio. To my left, I have Mrs. Golda Echefu. You're welcome to the show, ma. Thank you so much. And to my far left, we have Mr. Chooks Okani. You're welcome to the show, Thank sir. Thank you. Now, coincidentally, our two guests today are educationists. So I hope you're ready for the showdown. Fasten your seatbelts. Now, let's go straight into this discussion. Mr. Okani, feminism. <laughs> what is this all about? Well, feminism is uh, a belief in the social, political, and uh, economic equality between the sexes. Mm. In other words, it's uh, the advocacy of women's rights mm. based on the belief in the equality of the sexes. Mm. Um, perhaps to understand what is behind it, you need to... Uh, First of all, realize that it's a progeny of history. It's a creation of the Western society, actually. Mm. That is not to say that some of the conditions um, that it was created to address do not exist here. So it okay. started from way back. Yeah, it started from it started a long time ago. Mm. And um, we need to take a little trip into the history of the Western world to be able to see the things that propel it, things that inspire it. Um, the thing is that for much of the history, of the Western world, women had been restricted to the domestic space hmm. and prevented from taking part in public life. Okay. Okay. For instance, um, in the Middle Ages, it was forbidden for a woman to own property, hmm. to study, and to more or less appear in public hmm. or take, take part in public life. Um, as recently as the 1890s, in Germany, for example, in some parts of Germany, a husband had the right to sell his wife if he wanted to. Really? Yes, in France. Um, by the end of the 19th century, uh, in a place like France, it was forbidden for a woman to come out in huh. public with her head uncovered. Yeah. In fact, um, uh, in Europe and the United States, uh, about a hundred years ago, um, and these are, these are nations that are supposed to be the bastions of human rights. Um, women had very limited rights, they had very li limited access to education, they couldn't vote, they couldn't be voted for, that means they couldn't seek elected office. In fact, in America, um, just to give you one example, it was only as recently as 1984 that women in the state of Mississippi were given the right to vote, mm -hmm. to seek public office. Um, in the whole of the U.S., it was only in 1974, if I remember, that women were permitted to, to obtain credit cards. 
So all these are the foundation of yes, the whole feminism. Yes, these are the things that propelled it. Mm. Okay, so there have been uh, there have been structural, mm. um, legislative, and cultural impediments to female self-actualization, female self-expression, and all of that. Okay, and I want to say that to the extent that feminism is devoted to the removal of these barriers, okay, um, it's uh, it's good in the sight of God. In fact, God is a feminist, wow. and God. I am a feminist <laughs> <laughs> to the extent that it is designed. To take to away. eliminate these restrictions. Uh, because God didn't put those restrictions on women. Mm. Uh, the society did. Social mm. condition indeed. Mm. Uh, social condition indeed. In, the Bible says in Galatians chapter 3, I believe verse 17 to 19, uh, it says, As many of you as are baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is therefore neither Greek nor Jew, born nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. He said, mm. and if you are Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So God has made them one with men, and Jesus has made them joint heirs with him. How dare you say that they are not entitled to the rights that they are asking for? So, so the feminists. Are, yes. Feminism. Yes. Is not bad. No, it is not. That's what I'm trying to say. God is a feminist. Yes, God is a feminist. Let me that let, let me that is if you remove, there are an aspect of which is there's an aspect of feminism mm. that um, God is not in support. I'll, of. I'll come back to uh, you on that. Okay. Okay. Now, Mrs. Echefu, yeah. do you agree that God is a feminist? Yeah, I think so. He is because of the laid down rules in the Bible. Okay. Yeah, I believe so because He gave all both mm. men and women mm. equal opportunities. He respects both men and women, mm. you know. But the problem is, men took advantage. Men took advantage. Yes. And Please, Mr. Chooks, note that men took advantage. Go ahead. Men took advantage mm. and started withdrawing some of the rights of women, mm. especially when a woman wants to obey what God says in the Bible. Mm. Now they will want to oppress them, they will want to, you know, um, put them on the, sweep them under the carpet. So feminism is good Yeah. in order to get all those rights back? Yes, it is good to get all those things right, but, mm. but. competing with men or trying to be, because competing with men Mm. Or trying to be like a man mm. is what you don't agree with. Agree that. with that one. Mm. Going to the extreme, mm. you know, going outside the board of what the main purpose was. Let me come to you, Mr. Okan. Competing with men. Now I remember that um, I remember reading something about the second wave of feminism around the 1960s and all of that, mm. and there major objective was, let us dispossess this men. Why? They have been the ones oppressing us. They see us as inferior to themselves. And so they think all that we are worth is help them fulfill or realize their purpose. Now, do you agree, do you, do you agree with this? What, you, what we need to realize is that all movements of rights advocacy um, historically uh, make mistakes at some point along oh. the way. That's what happened to feminism, mm. okay? Um, and what we need to look at here now is how the quality of the sex is interpreted, mm. okay? Um, they got the interpretation wrong at some point in the history of the movement, and that's because of the intensity of the injustices. That's my personal uh, view. That's uh, as a result of the intensity of the injustices okay. that, that they had to contend so with. So they got it wrong. Yes, yes. So... Um, so the question that, 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 w that we have to look at is this. How do you interpret the quality of sexes? Mm. Is gender role differentiation inequality? Okay. Or is it a reality dictated by biology and by God? Mm. Okay. Where I believe they made a mistake was when they began to rebel against the natural order, when they began to rebel against the God-dictated role differentiation between 
men and women. I believe that's what my sister was trying mm. to, the point my sister was trying to make. Mm. Okay? And then, um, to begin to want to rule the family, okay. they were not designed to do mm. that. Uh, to, be, to want to share leadership in the family. Mm. They were not, that, that's not, the issue of who leads the family, I believe, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's dictated by biology. The issue of who gets pregnant in the family is dictated by biology. Okay. The issue of who takes care of children to a large extent is dictated by biology. So if you don't understand this, you might think that they are socially designed frameworks. Okay. They are not. Mm. Okay? So that's, that's, where, that's where they need to get it right. Mm. Okay? Don't rebel against the role that God has assigned to women to perform. All right? Mm. But again, um, it's because men had made the home hell hmm. okay um, so somebody needed to stand up to them every man needs to be a feminist <laughs> that's the solution to the problem every if we man. all recognize that women have rights and yes. do the right thing i believe all of these things should be taken care of yeah. every man needs to be a feminist <laughs> do you agree with this yes because when a man becomes a feminist he will be able to put himself in the shoes of the wife. Mm. He will be able to allow the wife to express herself. He will be able to allow the wife to play the role, role she's supposed to play. Mm -hmm. She's able, able to allow the wife to, you know, have a voice. Mm. So, but if you're not a feminist, if a man is not a feminist, you will always say, I'm the head, I'm the head, I'm the head. Fine, we accept you're the head, but you have to acknowledge that your wife has a role, your wife has a voice, mm. your, ha your wife has something up there. Mm. You know, but most men oppress you because they feel that they are, you know, that they are their head. Okay, now let's take it beyond marriage, right? Okay. It's not everybody who is married. Yes. And it, some feminists, or a lot of feminists are not even married. Yeah. Mm. And you know, you're now talking about the man should you know, help her, the man mm. should be a feminist mm. and all of that. Now, for the people who are not married, how does this whole, the man should be a feminist thing, apply to them? Mr. Okani, can you talk to us about this? You must understand that what people think and believe, uh, to a large extent, dictated by social conditioning. And so a woman doesn't need to be married to know that there are problems in the world. Um, right. If she's a female teenager, she probably sees how how her father deals with her mom. Okay. Um, she probably sees the differences in how she's treated at work and uh, in school and all of that. Mm -hmm. So um, we live in a society that is saturated with all of these uh, mm -hmm. problems. And you don't have to, it's not really within the family Confines space alone marriage, that, yeah. that you see these things. Mm. You encounter them everywhere. everywhere. And then also, don't forget the power of the social media. Mm. They hear things, Very they read powerful, things, yeah. they see things, and all of that. And more importantly, um, they see males, mm. their age mates, project this superiority. I will dominate. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. I'm here to dominate. Mm. You, know, you, know, you, know, you know you are you're a girl, I'm a, boy. I'm a boy. So they see all of these things, they encounter them. Mm. And that's why it becomes not just something for married women, yes, but for it goes beyond yes, that. for all women. <sighs> this is this is just it's just pushing me somewhere I don't want to go. Let yeah. me come back. Now, um, some people have argued that this issue of feminism is something in the minds of women. They say it's because of the way you perceive yourself. It's your own perception of yourself that is affecting your reality. Do you agree with this? That the way women see themselves is part of the problem? Well, to some extent, okay. the way some women, not all women, okay. see themselves mm. can be you know, part of this problem. But I don't think that that is the, 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 the whole issue. issue. Mm. There are other issues like societal expectation okay you know they expect a woman to do this they expect a woman to be there mm. they expect even traditional expectations mm. culture cultural expectations mm. a woman is not supposed to be there so all those things affect affects the woman's psyche you know it, it affects 
a woman. Mm. At times you go for a meeting, you want to talk, they will say, sit down, you're a woman. Mm. <laughs> Even in a big, yes, it, in know. a circle, mm. you know, a woman will be giving an um, appointment. They will want to, they will not want to obey, they will want to oppress her mm. and do all manner of things. Mm. So in that, in doing that, a woman will start, begin, you know, will begin to think, mm -hmm. is it because I'm a woman? Mm. Can you do this to your male folks mm. and all that? So I don't think, um, I think the woman has some contribution, mm. you know, on that. But, but it's largely not her fault. Yes, it's not her fault. Okay, we'll just hold that, you just hold that your thoughts there. We'll be right back after this break. We will talk more about how feminism affects women, how it affects marriages, and indeed how it affects the society. Don't go away, we'll be right back. We often forget that a strong society is built on strong family and strong families are built on strong marriages. That's why we are introducing this program to you called Relationship Matters. Welcome back to the show. We have been speaking with two sensational guests, Mr. Chuks Okani and Mrs. Golda Echefu and we have been talking about feminism. If you think you have missed any part of this, ensure that you follow us on all our social media platforms, on Twitter, on Facebook, and on Instagram, at Worthy by Design. Let me come to you, Mr. Okani. I would ask, how can we strike a balance? between this secular equality that feminism is fighting for and God's designed purpose for a woman. That's God's designed place for a woman. Well, that's a big question, but uh, what easily comes to mind is that first of all, our sisters, our females, mm need to unpack um, certain ideas that they had constructed over time um, about uh, relationships between, between women and men. Uh, the most important is that they need to look at how inequality within the sexes is interpreted, okay? And if they do that properly, they would find out, like I have said before, that um, a woman's role in the family is dictated by God. Mm. Like I said, dictated by biology. Um, are there injustices that have evolved over mm. time, you know, um, socially around that role? Yes, there is. But um, a basic distinction needs to be made between um, what I do because I'm a woman, mm -hmm. because of my biology, mm. uh, between that and what I do because of the structural impediments that, that I have to live daily with mm. in society. So, first of all, there needs to be that um, understanding on the part of, on the part of women. Um, and then, beyond that, um, it's really a big project to get men involved, the government involved, and um, there are all kinds of people that are connected with this matter. Mm -hmm. We need to look at legislations, we need to look at uh, the structures of society, we need to look at, uh, at uh, our culture, we need to look at uh, social conditioning. Mm. you know, and all Mindset. of that. Mm. Uh, these are the things that we need to fix mm. to be able to get the right balance between the woman actualizing herself and then playing the role that she needs to play, that she was designed by God to play in society. So, so are you in, saying... In the, in, the, in the family. Are you saying the woman cannot do this on her own? That's finding she can that now. balance. She can. She can. Why not? She can. Uh, like we were saying before, um, social conditioning, and perception is also a part of the matter. So she needs to change yeah, that. Yeah, she needs to, she needs to, like I said, she needs unpack to unpack a lot of ideas. Um, she need, but you don't blame them anyway, uh, because 
Don't forget that perception begins as reality. Mm. It's an over-projected reality. Over time becomes an over-projected mm. reality. Mm. And then becomes completely separated from reality and, and against a life of its own and begins to dominate you. Mm. But you know, it starts from empirical mm. uh, facts, things that you can see. Mm. Okay? But what I'm saying is that that education is bigger actually than the woman. Everyone needs to get involved in it. Okay. Uh, okay. It's a big vision. Yes, it is. Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Um, HFU, it is a big vision. Does this vision come down to marriage? This vision of feminism, does it come down to marriage? Yes, it does. And I personally feel mm. women, what they need to do is to go back to the foundation. Mm. What's the foundation? As a as, as Christian woman, you have to go back. What is God saying concerning me? What is the purpose of God in my life? Where am I supposed to be? What is my stake in this whole thing? Because if you don't know whom you are, because this feminism issue, women, a lot of people are seeing it in different ways. Mm. It's being misused, it's being and misinterpreted, it's being confused. It's being confused. Mm. A lot of people, that's why you see a lot of girls doing all manner of things, a lot of women leaving their homes. Mm. I feel that we have to go back mm. and there should be an introspection. Yes. What is God? What did God say concerning me as a woman? What am I supposed to be? From that point, you take it up. So when you take it up from that point, you'll be able to say, okay, this man is treating me this way. These people are doing this way. God said it should be this way. Let me follow it God's way. Mm. Because no matter how they shout, we shout mm. as women, mm. no matter how we fight, mm. except God steps in, mm. not much will be, you know. No, not, not much will be achieved. achieved. Okay, now, Mr. Okani, <laughs> she said she has given this a very spiritual um, perspective. I want, to give this, I want us to give this a normal day perspective. Feminism, can we bring it home? Can we bring it home? Yes, can we bring it home? I am a feminist. I bring it back to my marriage. Well, it depends. Um, depends on. <laughs> <laughs> if, if your marriage has mm. been structured um, in a way that uh, makes it impossible for you to... I'm trying to be careful. Uh, the point I'm trying to make is that um, some reactions of women mm. are inspired by the things that go the on conflict. around mm. them. I'm being very careful so mm. that somebody out there doesn't think I've issued a license <laughs> to them for rebellion. What I'm just trying to say is that this matter of making the home work, mm. it's not a woman's work alone. It's a contributory effort. Okay, it's not a woman's work alone. And I dare say that if men were subjected to certain situations, they would also react. Okay. So let's keep this in mind. I'm trying to be balanced. Mm. Uh -huh. So um, to answer your question directly, no, we don't have to bring it home. Mm. But I'm saying that people do bring it home mm. because there are yeah, circumstances. conditions mm. that, 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 that make that happen. Mm. No, we shouldn't bring it home. Okay. But no, we should also make it uh, make we should not we shouldn't make it impossible uh, i mean pos uh, how do i say we should make it impossible for for women not to bring it home well, well if the men are feminists that it will make things easier yes Absolutely. they will complement <laughs> each other Absolutely. okay it, you know if you bring it home a woman should not bring it home mm. in the totality of it in the extremity of of it mm. but they should bring it home when the husband is a feminist, okay, do you, you, you both can relate. You both can relate and understand what mm. it is and work with it. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. But when your husband is the African traditional man, <laughs> you must flow with him that yeah, way. It might not work mm. if you want to claim your right. I feel that in marriage, 
you complement each other. Okay. You don't compete. Okay. You complement your... Mm -hmm. Look for the areas you know you can function better and go in there. Then where your husband can, it's a sort of understanding. Mm. If there is understanding, there will be no question of feminism, just like uh, Bro Okani said. You know, if there is understanding in the home, you know, oh, my wife can do this better than me. So it's not, we are not at war? At all. <laughs> okay, well, we're, we're, we're trying to round up. So, Mr. Okani, you give me your final thoughts on this issue. Now, there are the demands of marriage, on the one hand, for a woman. There are the demands for secular fulfillment. And then there's also the pressure of breaking free so that you can have fulfillment in your life. How can we find the balance in all of this seeming confusion? It is not that difficult to, to find a balance. Um, like I said, dealing with this matter goes beyond women. Because uh, women alone did not create the conditions that are fighting, that are reacting against. You must keep this in mind. Mm. It's, um, it's something that has um, evolved over time, you know, socially. Uh, and everybody, everybody was part of creating the conditions that, you know, that women are reacting against. What I think is that uh, men um, should as much as possible remove all the unnecessary and oppressive restrictions that you have around the home. So the woman around, can be... And around the family. Mm -hmm. The men need to do that. Mm. Okay? Um, and then women, especially the feminists, mm. they need to talk to themselves. I insist that there has to be a distinction between the injustices that you go through, mm -hmm. you know, um, because of the structural and cultural and, uh, and uh, legislative uh, impediments that, that, you, know, that, that mm. you have around you. And the role that biology has given you to play in the family, the role that God mm. has given you to play in the family, you need to understand that these two things are different. Mm. And so in dealing with this other one, do not project it into the other one. Right, that's women need to mm. do that. Okay? okay, they have to manage both separately. Yes, yes, and men too need, like I have said, to create the enabling environment. Okay. Government too, if there are legislative restrictions against women that mm. shouldn't be there, the government should remove it. Okay, if there are structural uh, uh, imbalances in society, you know, uh, asymmetrical power structures between men and women, you know, that make it impossible for women to fulfill themselves. Government needs to remove. That's why I say this needs bigger than it's women. It's bigger than you women. You know, but then the thing is that they are the ones who are supposedly under bondage. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there's the so tendency to see them, to want to see them take the lead. Okay. Okay. Um, let them do what they need to do, and uh, I'm sure that uh, our men are not unreasonable. Our but men. men determined <laughs> to crush women. Our yeah. men are not unreasonable. Yeah. What are your final words, Mrs. Yeah. HFU? Um, personally, I don't really believe in breaking free. Where are you breaking to? <laughs> mm -hmm. A lot of the families, feminists that break out, who suffers mm -hmm. if they are married? Who suffers? Mm. Is there the children, the marriage, the family? Mm. So I believe in equity. Mm. I believe in in the home. Try as much as possible to work, or even in your workplace, even in your uh, marketplace as a woman. Whatever you do. Whatever you do, mm. try as much as possible to be fair in your dealing. Show Christ-like life. You know. Breaking off in the family is not the answer if you're a married woman. I don't advocate for that. So find the balance. Find the balance. Set your priorities right. Mm. Sacrifice. Mm. If you're a woman and you want to get to the pinnacle of your career, career. Mm. tell yourself, at this stage, I have to let go. If the pressure in the family is much on taking care of your children, lower your expectations and your in the meantime in the meantime there will be a time time flies there is a season for everything 
So immediately your children enter secondary school, university, you can pursue okay. whatever you want to pursue. Thank, Thank you, you so much. You have heard it all, feminism or no feminism. Our guests have even prescribed a medication to end this. Every man should be a feminist because God is a feminist. Every woman is worthy by God's design. You are not a subclass, but created with a purpose and dignity. So find that purpose, pursue it, and be the best you can be. A big thank you to our guests, Mr. Kani and Mrs. Echefu. Thank, thank you for sparing you your much. time with yeah. us. We really appreciate it. So, till we come your way again, same time, same station, remember you are worthy by design. And I am Ibera Chims. Bye now. <laughs>